hi love there was a time in primary school where i'm sure you probably did a needs and want exercise and on your needs side there was probably like water food and like oxygen you know the basic things and on the wants stuff was probably like a barbie doll or something like that but now there seems to be a lot more on the needs side it actually used to be you need this nail color you need this hairbrush this product has transformed my skin this is my favorite cardigan. These are my favorite sweatpants. This is the best phone charger. I can't take it anymore. Today, we'll be talking about how overconsumption is making you broke. We are tackling everybody here. We are tackling the advertisers. We are tackling the businesses and corporate businesses. We are attacking social media influencers. We are attacking me. We are attacking everybody here. <laughs> First we, are going to, first, we are going to tackle social media and everything in between. I am ignoring the butt of the cat. Pourquoi? Hey, hey, allez-y. Excuse me. Have you heard of the phrase, you are what you eat? But let's bring a twist to that and make it, you are what you consume. If you're looking at your social media page, also what you watch on the television, you are being bombarded with ads. I mean, everyone's talking about the new Mean Girl movie and how the product placement is just too obvious. It's unbearable to watch. By the way, the link to this video is down in the description. I mean, we have gone from deconstructing how advertisers would make us buy things on those old adverts, how they made you feel like you needed something. In fact, watch this video. That is now very outdated, but still it is being used not directly from advertisers and watching a traditional ad on the television in between your special show, but by everyday people. They have somehow managed to make an average person someone a seller of some sort. I can come on here and talk about the genocide in Palestine and someone will come in like, where did you get, where did you get this? Where did you get that? Oh my gosh, but your lips, you know, it's almost like we are looking for it at this point. They're not really trying to give it to us or sell it to us, but we are searching for it ourselves. Like every good thing that came from technology, social media, which was created for people to connect with each other more, make things easier. The corporate giants have taken that into a way of selling you something and they are using influencers and you to be able to make profits. So what used to be the adverts, getting someone, a random actor or something to sell something to you, where we could definitely see is directly from there. We're not, you know, you're not buying something because you know who is acting in that ad but you like the brand they've told you to like it you know they've told you that you needed it now they've sort of gotten that middle part out well they're still ugc but we'll get into that later it's more like now they are take now these corporate giants are now taking influencers people that we can relate to and selling us something that we did not ask for that, that we also do not need. I should have put a disclaimer, but I think I pretty much did it when I tried to advertise my hair to you that I'm also part of the problem. I'm not better than anybody. We are all trying to just be better people, save money and stop, you know, this consumerism we're doing. Now, we know the best way to sell to people is to make sure that they're first insecure. And as influencers, we don't really realize that we're doing this, that we are sometimes making people insecure for them to buy something, for them to buy something on our affiliate links and stuff like that. And I saw this video of this girl saying that, why can't just regular people be influencers? Why? You know, but then at the same time, if a regular person comes on here with no makeup, with with bubble walls is that what they're called you know those walls that aren't smooth it's not really aesthetically pleasing the quality is an android no one wants to watch that you know we want to watch people that have made it in life we want to watch something that's aesthetically pleasing but how do you create aesthetically pleasing things is by buying more things and showing them to you and then you enjoy it you put it at the back of your mind when you're out in the shop oh why why do you feel that you need that because you saw so many times people using that and you somehow feel like you are going to be a better person if you get that it's really just a giant circle going round and round really if an influencer is trying to get into 
content creation and making money and you know doing what they love but to do that they have to buy things to put in your face so that you are interested because if they don't you are not going to engage with their content i had to buy a new camera you know did i need a cam do you need a camera to start a content to start to start making videos no you don't you can use your phone but i had to buy that so that you know my videos are better quality so that you can watch them and enjoy them you know, this sense of need to get something to be better. But then at the same time, you're encouraging other people to do the same. And then we end up just buying unnecessary things that you don't need and therefore running out of money. When I wanted to start being a UGC content creator, that is user generated content, where you make a video for a company or brand and you send them the video, you don't have to post it on your account. You don't need any amount of followers. You are just advertising a product to sell to people in a more human, to human which almost sounds absolutely ridiculous because it's like i have to you know pretend that i'm your friend you know i have to pretend that i'm on facetime with you to trick you into buying something that you don't need when you really think about it deep down it's like what are we doing you know so when I was starting out and I was looking at other UGC contracts, I was like, oh my gosh, I need more product. So every time my husband and I would go to the shops, I would always just buy random products that, that I did not need to make, you know, those aesthetic opening video, you know, opening the product, putting it on your skin. Um, you know, I bought so many, you know, products that did not do anything for my face. I mean, one time I let one of the products fall on my table and when i came back the color of the table where the product expelled changed color i was like what am i putting on my face and i remember people asking me in the comments does it like remove acne you know stuff like that and uh and i'll read you know something online about the product you know it's good for this and it has this you know and I'll, I'll just be like yes you know but did it actually work on me it didn't you know uh, how much did it cost uh, three euros you know but those you know three euros times 50 other products that i'm buying that's running all my money and just it going i wonder if that person actually bought it but it just goes to show that people are definitely relying more on influencers to tell them if something is good or not even if they don't need it but as long as an influencer their favorite person has suggested it to them therefore it needs to be bought even though they don't need it Again, not bashing influencers here. I'm not. I am part of that. Okay. But I almost want to come to a sort of conclusion of what we should do. You can help me up, help me out in the comments uh, on really what the solution is. Because what, what can we say? Don't be in, an influencer. You know, um, you know, don't show people your 30, you know, plus skincare routine, <laughs> you know. Um, but I guess it's, but also it's also holding us accountable of where if i'm making a video i make skincare videos on my tiktok account um i'm giving tips um i'm not telling you to buy it if you don't need it okay i continue using what you're using someone asked me she was like i've been using this you know should i you know just let it go and you know and, and i really should have said maybe finish using it you know and then get something else and really do your research before you buy something you know because also what may work on me might not work on you you know things like that just maybe as influencers being more informed and going about it as teaching you know how you can minimize or maybe get what you just need i don't know something like that instead of just like you need this when it's a mascara like do you really do you really need it in your life you know uh, can you just use the one you use the one you're using is fine it's fine <laughs> it's fine you don't need to get a new one it's fine um but yeah that's something to think about definitely now because we're on social media pretty much like all the time we have to start watching what we are putting in our brains. As I said, that you are what you eat, you are what you watch, you know. Watch this video. Today's episode of I'm Rich, Your Paul. Look at all the things I own that you could never afford. Why? Because you're a povo. You see all those products under her bed. I don't think that's pretty normal behavior. Sue me. Please don't. But you have to start asking yourself as someone that's watching this. Like, you have to have your own realization that you do not need that. You can watch an, a 10 care step 
um, skincare routine and decide for yourself. You don't need that. It is entertaining to watch, but you don't need that. You know, really putting strict boundaries on yourself and also minimizing the people that you follow that are always constantly trying to sell you something that you know you don't need that are always exaggerating on this product you know just really trying to you know the greed you know what i'm talking about you know i'm not talking about people that really generally trying to sell something that's good that's sustainable all that kind of stuff but like something generic where it's like honey you're a millionaire influencer you do not need to be trying to sell something like you girl you know just for you to differentiate you know and cut i mean you're already getting forced um ads from youtube i'm so sorry on youtube you're watching on youtube right now you're getting it in your movies in your series as well you're getting it on the billboards you're getting it in your spotify there's so many adverts so the least you can do if you can't limit those is to just not follow people who are constantly trying to sell you something because at the end of the day it's your money you are the one you are the people suffering because of the economy you need to take responsibility for yourself and really try your best to minimize the effects of this whole giant mess there has also been a rise of hauls which again i have also done i have done my sheen haul all that kind of stuff and i have felt personally that i needed to spend more money save up more money so that my hauls can be long because sometimes i'll buy like two or three things and i feel like it's not worth it because no one's gonna watch because it's just two things i need to have a huge box and throw it and show you that this is content you know this is something you want to watch you want to get you want to get inspo you know because i'll be so kind of jealous you know of the content creators who can afford to have hauls every week buy new clothes every week 500 dollars worth of hauls like i would want that but i don't have that money but i would try my best to get money where i could use it for something else to just buy clothes so that i can make a haul just to fit in in fact sometimes i would buy clothes maybe twice in a month but like not open it up so that i can open it on camera you know to show you that yeah i just you know randomly buy clothes that are worth 500 dollars. you know i was also in that you know where it's like really is it really sustainable though to do that and also on celebrity culture where they casually show us their background of hundreds of shoes that they don't even know they have I think we need to talk about the overconsumption closet pipeline. We go from this, these celebrity closets that are way overfilled, more shoes than you could ever possibly need in a lifetime, more clothes than you could ever need in a lifetime. And just to include the boy math version here, you know, one man having 185 cars and 160 motorcycles is extreme overconsumption. And so when celebrities model this kind of shopping behavior, this kind of hyper overconsumption, it leads to the haul culture that we see here on TikTok and normalizes hyperconsumption for normal people like you and I. Bragging about the fact that you own 185 cars or endlessly posing with tons, like how many bags are there even in just this one shot of hyper expensive luxury goods? Is celebrities and this mainstream shopping culture training us to become hyper consumers? If this is what aspirational looks like, then simply owning three pairs of shoes is not aspirational. It's not cool. It's not hot. It's not chic. And now you as an individual who's not making $150 million a year, but is probably making 40, 50, 60 grand a year has to go out and spend your paycheck on getting more shoes, more clothes, more cars, more whatever. I feel like sometimes you could probably like be like, oh, this is, this is your, do you know, this is yours. And they'll be like, they have no idea many bags you do not need that many bags i was trying to research on like um like how many things that women in like the 1800s wore but i wanted to go on the african side because I'm, I'm i'm african okay i don't have to talk about victorian women every time when it comes to history references i can talk about you know in the Af african people you know what they used to wear not that much that many you know woven clothes made of leaves and stuff because of our climate so we generally did not need that many clothes and obviously it depends on which culture you know D don't be that person so we're like there is a billion people in africa like you know what i'm talking about okay now let's backtrack a little bit on the holes and what is the big deal about it like why am i you know complaining and you know being uptight about this now to explain just a little bit more of the environmental impact 
whole culture actually makes let's read some of the statistics i can't say it okay i can't say it of the hundred billion garments produced each year 92 million tons end up in landfills to put things in perspective this means that the equivalent of a rubbish truck full of clothes ends up on a landfill site every second if the trend continues the number of the fast fashion waste is expected to grow up to 134 million tons a year by the end of the decade a hundred billion there is what how many people on this earth i think about nine billion seven you know so that means most of us have more than we actually need and most of the stuff that we buy is gonna land up in a landfill will also cause pollution not only that the people that are making these things is always allegations of work they're not getting paid new things new things are coming out each and every single time there's always a new trend and i think that's one of the problems where we are absolutely responsible of making clothing a seasonal thing like there's always a a thing trend there's always you know birthday clothes that you need to buy there's always vacation clothes summer clothes where it's like but you you bought that last year do, do you need to buy it again like you can wear exactly the same thing like it's okay but because that is what we're seeing constantly on our page we feel the need to also get that you know i had a i had a birthday this is the video that i posted on my birthday that is what i was wearing on my birthday i'm wearing the same shirt today you know because i realized like why do i, I remember going online searching for birthday clothes but i was like i'm not really doing anything special but i felt the need to have some sort of huge photo shoot for my birthday you know to show people you know but like why 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 did i feel this way because of the amount of things that i always see when it comes to birthdays because i was searching up what to do for your birthday you know you need to get birthday makeup you know you need to get birthday hair you know all that really influencing me as an influencer as well to just get things that i don't need you know i'm not saying that for your birthday you shouldn't get some sort of special treatment whatever that's not what i'm saying but if you do have a lot of clothes a lot of nice things do you, you have to ask yourself do you really need to get a new pair you know and if you are do you need it are you gonna wear it again you know is it something that you're just gonna wear for two minutes and then it's out and where is it gonna end up you have to think of where it's gonna end up after you've bought it there has also been quite a rise i love using the right the word rise <laughs> there's also been a rise of actors um saying that they're not getting paid enough you know you always wonder like you are a millionaire why are you complaining about not getting paid enough for a movie and i probably think that you think i'm talking about teraji pianson you know um but then i was also looking up some african actors who also have been sick and just not have money you wonder you've been making movies for such a long time how do you not have money so this thing is not only affecting regular people you know you, we don't have money we really don't things are rising but like our salaries are not rising with it that's the thing absolute thing but there's also us buying unnecessarily things but we've been tricked into buying you know that's the whole point of this video but then the celebrities you wonder like why because they have to have this keep up which you also feel like we have to keep up with whatever is happening whatever trend is happening because i saw this video of siraj being like you know there's taxes that happen you have to pay your stylist you have to pay this the, your wardrobe or that designer stuff like that you have to pay for all of that so and i also remember um she also said this this african actor legend by the way she also brought that into attention that so, because of the nature of our job we are heavy spenders you see the, we the clothes you wear matters to the world it's, we call it packaging the way you package yourself and if and if you the worst is that if you wear one dress now to uh, an award night, okay. nobody expects you to wear it again to yes, another, another award night. And you would have bought it. You wouldn't mm. go and buy the cheap, cheap ones mm. because they say you're a star. Yeah. They say, the first star, no one. They doesn't know how to dress. Now. Mommy is it's, keeping it real. You understand? <laughs> yeah. So these are the things that make us spend a lot of money. Mm. And then people pounce on you. They feel because they see your money. face every year. Uh, I know how many people that have come to this house today hmm. to ask for help. And people are like, yeah, but why? You know, like, it doesn't matter. You know, like, you don't know how to spend your money. But, like, you need 
we've created a place where you need to have those keep ups to be able to remain relevant so you see that with the stanley cups you know these 13 year old kids crying to their mothers like i need it i need it you know to keep up because if you don't you're gonna get made fun of like how do you not have an iphone in 2024 you know um you know how dare you not have the whole set of the apple products you know because you know it's you know it's things that you don't need but like status wise you know fear of missing out all those things are affecting everyone from the bottom up like everyone and their mom is being affected by this and it's almost taking away the free will to want to stand up and be sustainable because it's like if i do that's why i'm always you know having this battle is if i do you know, want to be this minimalist, you know, what am I going to do? I'm an influencer. I'm a content creator. What am I going to do? Because I need to be selling something. There's an, a brand that's going to email me and be like, you, you, you know, you work well with us, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's what happened as well with Best Dressed, you know, because she wanted to talk about these issues, but people are like, yeah, but you're in fashion, you know, like, why are you working with Gucci? You know, but, it's like, but she has to make a living. Um, yeah, definitely conflicting topic, but I think there are definitely things that we can do as a whole if we all come together as, as one, one you know that can definitely help um us not ruin this planet and i think as a start we can start by really asking ourselves when you're being presented a product like will this product make me happier is it going to change my life? Is it going to fill the empty hole? Which I feel like a lot of people nowadays, they feel empty. So buying things becomes some sort of a therapeutic experience where when we are shopping, it actually says this, and we make a purchase, our brain releases endorphins and dopamine. For some, this momentary pleasure can lead to compulsive shopping as the instant reward and motivation to re-experience the rush starts to outweigh self-control and practical financial consideration. So you get this generation where a lot of people aren't satisfied no one is happy prices are too high there's too much crime so many bad things are happening there's war happening there's genocide happening in palestine so we go on social media to sort of you know feel better about ourselves live in someone else's reality for a minute for a minute they tell you what they use and you see them being happy so you subconsciously feel like maybe if i use that maybe if i buy that i'm gonna feel better about myself so therefore you purchase you want to feel the emptiness the loneliness and sadness and numbness disconnected from others and therefore your happiness is measured by the things that you possess you know that is what makes you happy which i definitely felt before when i moved into this house when my husband was just you know living by himself it wasn't decorated you know this wall behind me was just white and the tv was just hanging there with a little wire you know and uh, this huge mob i forgot what it's called in, in in english but the tv stand that was just it it was the couch had stains and all that kind of stuff and i hated it because i wasn't working staying at home that's all i saw which is gray furniture i hated it and when i started to work you know i started to buy furniture you know decorating my husband did this it's beautiful um and i honestly thought that that was going to make me happy but it did not but i'm glad it happened you know i'm glad you know got the house changed you know um but it did not fulfill the emptiness I had. I was depressed. I was far away from my family. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm living in France by my uh, by myself, basically. I don't have any family here. Um, I was depressed, but I thought that buying things, making this house different, getting products, you know, getting wigs, getting clothes, all that was gonna make me feel good. It did not. And I know people hate hearing that from celebrities. I do too. That money doesn't, you know, doesn't um, buy you happiness. Nah, nah, nah. But it's like, okay, okay now, because you have it, because you have it, okay? Um, and I definitely, I'm not going to say that, you know, um, money is not going to solve your pro problems because it definitely can, absolutely. But the idea of just getting possessions and possessions, there's just a momentarily happy thing you know, I think you have to work on the mental side of yourself before accumulating that money because at the end of the day, it might make things easier. You're less stressed, but is it going to make you happy? And there's actually a verse that I wanted to read 
it is matthew chapter 8 verse 34 to 38 it says what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul or what will a man give in exchange of his soul that is just a food for thought on you accumulating all these things buying these things is it worth it you gain all these things but then you lose yourself really and i also want to talk about the reason why some of us feel the need to buy things because not all of us grew up rich okay i did not grow, grow up rich at all okay so when i finally got to be in a, a space where i could be financially stable where i could buy things you know I, we didn't buy snacks in my house and finally i got to be in a household where i could buy snacks i would overspend buy things that i did not need trying to fill you know that hole you know trying to please that young child in me you know um and i had to discuss that with myself like why you know because i remember i went to a predominantly school so it was a very expensive school so uh my parents could only afford basically the fee but all these other nice little things you know that other kids had i didn't have like this special crayons you know these really just no just a lot of things you know paintings and stuff like that you know i did not have and finally you know i was in the store and i am this old person trying to buy coloring things you know i got a coloring book that's just really nice i love coloring and stuff like that i got paintings i got you know huge um painting canvases you know still stuck upstairs haven't touched them in your year but i was like you know what why am i doing this <laughs> why 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 because for some of us really purchasing things and buying things that we don't need comes from a really deep rooted trauma that we had growing up or you know something that we just never had and now and 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 that is now leading us to overspend now that was definitely a mouthful Okay, like I'm thirsty just by talking about this. Okay, it's stressing me out. But what can we now do about this? Now that we've talked about this, you and I, what can we do to move forward? Am I saying stop watching influencers? Block your favorite influencer? What am I saying? I'm basically saying let's just all start being aware and more intentional in what we do to affect others and that we can advise each other to have better spending habits we can prevent ourselves from being tricked we can be aware that someone's trying to sell us something we can be more secure that no i don't need that actually i'm beautiful the way i am you know not saying that don't buy makeup and stuff like that but like I'm saying like you can be self secure you know you can be you can have self esteem you can start working on that so that you are not a victim of buying things that you don't need you know and as influencers we can also just be more aware you know and not flaunt our pr packages and throw them you know i don't care you know and stuff like that um to people that are struggling you know we can also just be more aware of that you know um we can try wear as influencers repeat clothes online you know so that the people that follow us the young kids don't feel that oh because she does she never wears the same thing i shouldn't you know no no one's gonna remember you know but you know it humanizes us so i think we can be you know aware just the self-awareness that's what we can really start doing and when it comes to just regular people going on their day to day, we can start making lists. I had to do that with my husband because you know he, he definitely grew up richer, I guess. Because when we first in our first year of marriage, he would, when we go shopping, he would just like go, just go and you know, whatever you know, um, and you know by go i mean like there's no list being made there is no bags you know those you know bags because here in europe there's no plastic bags you buy the bag you know if you don't bring your own so he would always just go we have a ton of them you know because he would forget and buy a new one every time and i was like um babe because i grew up you know on the other side of the world and we would always make a list you know of things that we're gonna buy and you're not gonna step away from that list my mom would just be so strict about that like you're not 
what's on the list is what's gonna get bored so if you want that cereal you have to put it down you can't think about it when you see it because that's why the thing is the advertisement in shops because that's where you see it and you think that you need it but you don't so we had to start implementing things like that um to make lists and stick to that list really look at what we want to cook by the ingredients simple things like that make a huge difference if you want to go shopping for your birthday maybe buy something that you can re-wear it's not like something that you can't uh wear again so you're comfortable wearing it again just those type of things in mind when it comes to your spending habits and really learning more how to budget and not feeling pressure of missing out and that yeah sometimes i'm gonna come here i have a video yeah where i just come here with no makeup you know and just normalizing things like that that happen in real life you know um and just trying to make it without having to get the whole set of something you know like not feeling like if you want to start something you have to buy this and this and that but just using what you have i wanted to start ugc i want to you know i wanted to start ugc i should have just started using the products i had i didn't have to buy you know um things like that but anyway i Hope that this video was somehow insightful for you and you can do your own research on that, implement some of the things in your life as well. And let's just all try to be better together as one, you know. Um, yeah, so tell me what you guys think about this topic and see you guys next time. Bye.